It is a multifactorial problem. It's a problem, it's fundamentally a genetic problem, but there are clearly genetic and environmental or so-called epigenetic um, uh, factors that can impact neural tube closure. Okay, and, and many, many of these involve the folate pathway, right? Now, folate is the building block of purines and pyrimidines, which of course are the backbone of the, of the uh, nucleotides, right? It provides, the key element of folate is, is that it provides methyl groups for other, for, um, other macromolecules. So the methylation of genomic DNA appears increasingly implicated in the epigenetic regulation of the crucial gene expression fundamental to the expression of these neural tube defects. And the pathway that seems to be most focused upon by the, by the basic investigators um, sort of trailblazing in this area are, is a pathway in mice called the planar cell polarity pathway. And basically it's not a big surprise, but guess what? This has to do with folic acid metabolism. It's a transmembrane cytosolic protein, and it has to do with um, cytosolic proteins that enable folic acid metabolism to occur normally, okay? So the critical event is depicted uh, in the lower uh, right little cartoon here. I think everybody's familiar with it. I know it's been reviewed in your other lectures and shown quite nicely some of the embryology. So I skipped over that. But the fundamental issue in uh, neural tube defect formation is the failure of dissociation between uh, neuroectoderm and cutaneous ectoderm. So that failure of primary neurulation occurring about the 25th or 26th day is under regulation of these various pathways. And that failure draws the neural elements to the surface, enables the spinal fluid to be trapped beneath them and fundamentally changes the, the landscape of the way um, of the way uh, these uh, the, uh, the, of, of, of the of the expression of these disorders. I'm going to skip that for a moment. All right. So this is a very important paper because again, it takes us back to what is the root cause of a lot of these problems. And this is a paper that many people um, kind of skip over, but I think it's I think it's absolutely central. It's by an ep a very talented young. Uh, woman epidemiologist uh, at CDC, whose name is Krista Kreider, and I've met Dr. Kreider. She's a wonderful person, um, very uh, engaging person to talk to about neural tube defects because she has uh, brought something to the table that's very important, and that is the concept of dose dependency. And if you want to prove something in pharmacology, you have to establish dose dependency. And what she did was that she directly correlated in large epidemiologic studies. As I said, she's an epidemiologist who's worked at CDC. She used large populations in, in actually in upper Asia, China, and in fact, part of the Mongolian plateau. And what she showed was that there's a dose dependent relationship between, between maternal red blood cell folate and the inherent prevalence of neural tube defects. So she fundamentally established that you can draw a linear correlation between what the, uh, what the average um, woman of childbearing age, what the uh, folic acid levels are in the red blood cells and, her, and the, uh, the direct incidence of neural tube defects. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you liked that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.